Hello, good evening, and welcome back. An update on Protect the Whamins. The Ayanapa Britain has returned home after a false rape claim sentence in Cyprus. So yes, she has still been found guilty, but because we can't let someone who's uh, a woman who's falsely accused men of raping her, we, we can't let her actually face justice and, and punishment for, for what she's done, despite numerous, numerous women destroying men's lives. Historically, with false rape allegations of which they can never get back, as I've alluded to before, because the trial takes so long, and then the employers don't want to know them, and then they can't keep payments on their home, and then they're then homeless, and there's nothing they can really do from there. Even if they're then let off, that will, yes, but there's there's no support to then get them back on their feet again. They're just left out and say, okay, well, well done, you didn't do it, off you go. Even though if it's public, then nobody will trust them anyway, and it's the court of public opinion. Now, instead of this, where we, we have a lady who um, was having a, a relationship with a man for several months while working at that resort in the party town of Ayanapa in Cyprus, then slept with two other guys, um, and this, this was filmed, this consensual sex, as shown on video, she then apparently said, oh, the, the nine other guys also uh, gang raped her, uh, including one guy who has shown proof that he wasn't even there at the time uh, through the, the metadata of his selfie with his girlfriend when he, he wasn't there. And then the, um, the the medical examination showing she had light bruises and scratches on her thighs, which, okay, could be gang rape if they were surprisingly gentle and she was almost okay with it, but then it, it wouldn't be rape. Um, but it's it's not. Uh, indicative of gang rape at all and then when the police came to get her to take her statement she was just lounging by the pool which obviously everybody deals with trauma differently but this doesn't seem like someone who had been gang raped even though the police at the time said yeah this, this just, just doesn't have the feeling of someone who has been brutally gang raped just a, a day before and eventually she did recant her statement at which point the 12 Israeli men were flown home and then 10 days later after she found out that she would actually be facing prison time for her false accusation she then said oh no that was made under duress at which point her lawyer said can't work with her anymore due to our great disagreements because it seemed like she didn't know what she was doing I just thought oh seeing as these guys feel me having sex I'm going to take it out on them by accusing them of gang rape and hopefully getting them in prison for at least 15 years, but why not 25? Or at least ruin their lives so they can never do anything with life. So, given that she was then found guilty of this, the Cyprus justice system has things in place to say, okay, if you do also accuse a man of rape, it's a £1,500 fine and a year in prison. Just one year compared to at least 15, if not 25. And after this, women's rights groups internationally decried this saying no we we can't have this we we believe you and even the British government got involved saying oh you, you can't be doing this and this definitely can't be about your judicial system working as intended even though you keep saying that as the BBC will allude later so, oh it's because you get on well with Israeli and then you don't want to ruin your reputation as a tourist resort and you we want to get on well with Israel more. Um, it's surprising the BBC would attack Israel. Clearly, <laughs> they would never go after the Jews. But leading on here, they say instead of that year prison sentence and £1,500 fine, the 19-year-old was given a four-month sentence, okay, still prison time, suspended for three years, never mind then, and ordered to pay £125 in legal fees by a court in Parliament earlier. She arrived at Heathrow Airport with her mother, but avoided waited, waiting media. Apparently, she suffered from hypersomnia, meaning she had to sleep 20 hours a day. Um, how long would it take her to recover afterwards? <laughs> a day. Or well, maybe given the jet lag and the partying, two days. She'd come up oh, needing a dark space, no loud noises. Like, <laughs> that sounds like a hangover. Curious. Her lawyer said she was planning to appeal against her conviction, and the case was not finished by any means. Well, by all means, go for it, and then maybe you actually will be indicted. I would say quit while you're ahead. The teenager was put on trial and convicted in December after recanting a claim that she had been raped by a group of 12 young men in a hotel room in July. 
She said Zipka police had made her falsely confess to lying about the incident, something police had denied. Yes, she said that. Ten days later, after finding out that she would face prison time. Following the sentencing, her lawyer, Lewis Powell, said we will be seeking an expedited appeal to the Supreme Court of Cyprus and we will also be considering going to the European Court of Human Rights. Yes, after all, it's a, it's a young white woman. We must protect her at all costs. We do not feel we have had justice in terms of how the trial progressed, the manner in which it was conducted, the initial police investigation, and the fact that we feel she did not receive a fair trial. It, it was lengthy, of course, and they even had the medical examiners saying, oh, well, this isn't gang rape, and saying, ah, oh, but what about those bruises and scratches? <laughs> yes, still, not gang rape. In court on Tuesday, Judge Mc the judge, told the teenager he was giving her a second chance by suspending her sentence, allowing her to fly back to the UK. He said the woman's... <laughs> this is where we get into Lindsay Woodward territory, the Oxford student studying uh, medicine who stabbed her boyfriend and got let off because it might jeopardise her, her academic potential, because she had so much of it. Um, too smart for prisoners, some say. But yes, he said the woman's psychological state, her youth that she has been away from her family, her friends, even though working out was off the year, and academic studies this year, had led him to the decision. BBC World Affairs correspondent Carolyn Hawley said the case has had diplomatic ramifications for Cyprus and the UK's relationship. Following the sentencing, Boris Johnson, yes, our Prime Minister, even got involved with his spokesman saying the UK Prime Minister was pleased she can now return home. However, Downing Street said the UK government had highlighted its concerns about the judicial processes in this case and the woman's right to a fair trial to the Cypriot authorities. Well, I really do hope that they go ahead with it. They do find out exactly what happened. And whichever way that goes, obviously I firmly believe she is lying, but I will take back all of this if it turns out that she is true. Uh, she has been telling the truth, except for that time that she recanted it, yeah, for those 10 days. They have their analysis, which just blames Cyprus and Israel, saying it's nothing to do with the lady uh, at all. And so they've had women's rights groups in Cyprus, Israel and the UK saying, oh no, you can't be doing this. They have um, Oled Salatsunin, head of the Association of Rape Crisis Centres in Israel, told BBC News the conviction was unbelievable. <laughs> Very believable. She is not to blame at all. This sentence reflects backward thinking and not understanding the dynamics of rape. The judge here must learn what happens to the victim of sexual abuse. That's why the judicial system is in place and <laughs> only men can rape and women can't rape. But I don't think you want to hear how the law favours you even there. Susanna Pavlo, director at the Mediterranean Institute, oh, someone important, of gender studies, never mind, in Cyprus, said the case had sparked a culture of protest in the country. You already had it. This year, it has been revealed how broken our criminal justice system is, broadly in terms of police and social services response to violence against women and the lack of specialist services. Bear in mind, as soon as the police found out of this, they promptly took the other 12 men in for questioning straight away. So, bullshit. It's heartening to see how this has ignited women's rights campaigners and the women's rights movement focusing on this issue. This is not going to go away, we will not be silenced. It will go away, it'll go down the memory hole as more is found out, and you find that she is not somebody that you wish to associate yourself with. At which point, you'll say, oh, we, we never did, because, <laughs> hey, whoever controls the history controls the future. The teenager told police she was raped, yep, yeah, men were arrested, later freed. She was charged and spent about a month in prison before being granted bail in August ahead of her trial, of which she pleaded not guilty to causing public mischief by falsely accusing the group of raping her. It's a very nice way of putting it. Public mischief by accusing group of life-ending accusations. Well, what, that, that's the story. But what gets me, and I know I started off with this, but it just has to be said again, is that the backlash from this of people studying gender studies of all things and saying how oh, this is this is a, clearly a, a women's rights women's rights thing and you don't manage to focus on how for example the most prolific rapist in Britain uh, who's just been uh, arrested is all for, for raping men as, as well because men can get raped and by other men and if you take prison rapes into account then it's about equal between men and women funnily enough and you can throw in domestic violence as well. In fact, the worst relationship to be in from a domestic violence perspective is in a lesbian relationship. Whereas homosexual relationships, quite safe as it happens. The gay men, as it were. 
But yes, they, they say they will not be silenced, and of, of course they won't. They will forget about this and then just find something else to have a big uproar about until that falls through. They just need to keep jumping along before that ship sinks as the, it, it becomes flooded with truth. But as always, let me know what you guys think down below. Um, it's nice to have an update on the story, even though it is as disheartening as it is to try and suggest that we live in a patriarchal society that favours men and has done forever, even though it never has. And this is just another example of how, even in Britain, the so-called conservative government, they want to favour their women so much. So let me know what you guys think down below. Always interested to hear what you guys have to say. So thank you so much for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. And until next time, have a good one.